Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. Just kidding, but I am sure that you've watched Tiger King at this point because who hasn't? And maybe you've become a little obsessed with looking up the details of Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin's life, and you probably need a new hobby. So I'm here today to show you how to do an oil painting. And this is for somebody who has never picked up oil painting before. This is the place to start. Uh, years ago, when I first started oil painting, the first thing I ever painted was an apple. So that's what we're gonna paint today. You can use the reference image I have in the description below, or you can pick up an apple in your house, whatever you want. I've got my apple here. Uh, the other supplies that you're gonna need for this, a cup, odorless paint thinner. I have a link in the description of how you can get that and you can get it delivered straight to your door. Paper towel, a piece of paper. This can be notebook paper, copy paper, anything just to make sure you don't get paint on the table. And this handy dandy little kit, which is under 20 bucks. So everything else you need for an oil painting as a beginner is within this kit. So let me show you what that looks like. But before I do, it's always important to make sure you have a shirt on that you don't mind getting paint on. This one, I don't really wanna get messed up. So I'm gonna go change real quick. Now we're ready to go. Let me show you what this looks like on the inside. We're using the Royal Langnickel Essentials Oil Kit. You can get this on Amazon for under $20. When you open it up, you'll see that there are 10 different oil paints, white and black at the top, with all of your basic colors that you might need below. There's linseed oil, a mixing cup, an artist's guide, and then below that there are these little white kind of cardboard-like paper you can paint on, a palette, a palette knife, a pencil, and several different paint brushes. You're also going to need some odorless paint thinner, which you'll, you will have to buy separately, but that's also available on Amazon for pretty cheap. To get started, I'll need to pour the paint thinner in the cup. And remember, you don't need a ton, and this will be reusable, which I'll explain at the end, um, but you just need a little bit in your cup, especially for such a small painting that we're doing. I'm opening up this uh, cardboard-like paper that the kit came with. Now remember this is not ideal for oil paints, but we're gonna use it today because it came in our kit. So I'm gonna take the palette knife and the palette now. And remember that black and white should never purely be used alone. You always wanna mix them with other colors. You never wanna use a black to create a shadow or just a solid white to make a highlight. So I'm gonna start out with the red and the yellow, the green, which are all colors that we can see on the apple. And I'm also gonna use a blue because ultimately I will use that for the shadow. These will need to be punctured because they've never been opened before, these little paint tubes. So as you can see, it's very easy to do. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit so you can get through this part where I'm just adding the paints. I'm now gonna get the linseed oil and I'm gonna pour this in the little plastic white cup. And the purpose of linseed oil is to add fat to your paint. Every layer of paint you add with, with when it comes to oil paints um, should be a little bit more fatty so that when the, the painting dries, when it stretches and contracts, uh, it won't crack. I've actually ruined paintings that were cracked because I didn't add enough linseed oil. So I put that in the mixing cup. I've also added a burnt umber here, which I forgot to add initially. That's useful for an underpainting. These two paint brushes, the flat middle one in the kit, and then the smallest round tip is what we're using. I want to initially wet my brush in the paint thinner. You do not use water at all, just paint thinner. I'm gonna mix this burnt umber with a little bit of yellow and red because it's a little too dark. Typically when you get burnt umber, it's a little bit brighter or more orangey. So I wanna make mine a little bit more orange. 
And this initial part is what we call the underpainting. Um, and the purpose of an underpainting is to make sure that you have your basic shading and composition laid out on your canvas. So I'm initially just gonna do the basic shape of the apple. And the thing to remember when you come to this part is that it's okay if you mess up. This is just a the first step. We can easily cover it up with the colored paint that we're using next. So don't worry or stress too much about getting this just right because this is just a layout where our basic shadows are and the shape of the apple. Now, if you look at the reference image, you'll see there's, the shadow is coming on the left side of the apple. So I'm making sure that I make that side a little bit darker. Working on this white board tends to absorb the, the paint thinner and liquid very quickly, which is not what will happen if you ever use a canvas. I'll explain that in more detail towards the end of this video, some closing remarks that I make, but just be aware that it won't absorb quite as quickly. But since we are using the board from this kit, I want you to see how it works. So I'm using the paper towel to lighten up this right side so that it looks more like the apple looks in real life. I'm now gonna clean my brush very thoroughly. One way you can test if you've get, gotten all the paint off is touch it to the paper towel and if it comes clean, then you're good. I now uh, have, since I've cleaned my brush off quite a bit, I'm kind of creating a more watered down version of that same uh, color that I was using before. When I say watered down, I just mean watered down with paint thinner, obviously not actual water. Just to create that shadow because the shadow is much lighter than the apple itself. Now to clean the brush once more. I'm grabbing some white paint, which I forgot to put on the palette initially. You always wanna have a little bit of white paint so that you can lighten up your colors. I don't mean to use white paint ever purely by itself, but to mix with other colors. So now I'm creating kind of a more lime green. I've got that bright green already, but I wanna add a little bit more yellow to it. So it looks closer to the way the apple looks. I'll ultimately need to add even more yellow to this. And just be aware that the mixing process is what it's called, a process. It takes a little while to get your colors just right, and sometimes you end up creating more paint than you needed initially, but it's important to keep playing around with it until you get the exact shade that you want. Otherwise, you'll be left with a kind of bland looking painting. Now, you noticed earlier, too, that I added a little bit of linseed oil to this paint. Uh, that makes it a little bit smoother, but also, as I mentioned earlier, every layer of paint that you add, you want to add a little bit more linseed oil because it will allow the paint to stretch as this painting dries. And that's especially true on canvases, not quite as much 
on this little white board that we're using, but when you're on canvases, you want to make sure that the, those top layers of oil paint are um, very fatty so they can stretch as the painting cures over several months. So I'm picking up the flat brush again and I'm using that green that we've created, that kind of yellowy green. I'm going over the light side of the apple. I'm going to work my way kind of halfway over on the apple. And as I do the top parts of this apple, notice that I will always make the lines go towards the center of the apple. So that kind of creates the illusion that the apple has a little stem and goes in in the center rather than just being one big flat object. Now I'm creating those lines from the back of the apple. And that alone really, really helps to create the illusion of a round shape for the apple. Clean my brush again real thoroughly. Clean off the palette knife a little bit because now I want to create the really pretty red that we see on this apple. It's not quite an apple red though, it's a little bit brighter than that. So I'm adding a little bit of linseed oil, a few drops there so that I can blend that in with the red paint. And I'm also picking up a little bit of white as well. So I'm lightening it a little bit. Occasionally I'll hold the palette knife up to the apple to make sure I've gotten the, the red hue that I want. So that's a technique you can pick up as well. I'm using the flat brush again and I'm going to fill in this space that I haven't painted yet. And I'm going in between those spaces where I went in with that light yellow green. Now I'm kind of blending where the green and the red meet. 
so that it's not quite so stark contrast between the, the red and the yellow, because if you look at the apple, it kind of blends slowly, except for a few spots that are bright contrast. I'm now taking the small brush, round small brush, and I'm gonna go back with some red and get in those little small areas, some little lines here and there to blend in that yellow green that we created. cleaning off the brush again. I'm gonna make sure all the paint's off. I'm gonna pick up some of the yellow green from earlier and go in on some little spots on this big blob of red we have here. Break it up a little bit. And you notice as I paint, occasionally I'll just pull my paintbrush away. What I'm doing in those moments is taking a look at it, an, an objective look to see what I need to fix. Sometimes it helps to stand kind of far away from your painting and see what looks right, what needs to be fixed. I do that quite a bit. I will say it is much more difficult to blend colors together on this white cardboard that this kit came with. Uh, so as I will mention again at the end of this video, uh, it's a good idea to get some canvases because you'll have a better time blending and shading with your different colors when you have an actual canvas rather than a piece of board. Clean my paintbrush again. This is my version of Bob Ross's beating the devil out of it. I'm picking up a little bit of blue and the red that's still on my palette knife and mixing those together to kind of make a dark purple, almost like an indigo sort of color. I'm gonna add some white to it and lighten it up. So the end result should be almost like a, a deep lavender color. I 
I also added some blue here because if you look at the shadow on the apple, there's a really dark area right underneath the apple. And then as the shadow fades out, it's more of a purple, very light grayish color. But as I mentioned before, you never want to create a shadow with just pure black. That makes for a very bland, boring painting. You tend to want to use your cool colors for shadows uh, and your warm colors for the highlights. And that will create a much, much um, prettier painting in the end. Give it way more depth as well. Now going back with the blue and creating a more dark shadow that kind of fades into the purple. That gives the illusion that the apple is actually sitting on a surface rather than just floating in thin air. I'm also going up the side of the apple with a little bit of the blue, mixing that in with the, the red a little bit on the left side. You always want to think about your source of light. What direction is your light coming from? And once you've identified that, uh, you can always assume that the farther away from the light source, the more cool colors you will have. And the closer to the light source, the more warm colors you will have. And what I did here is I cleaned off my brush completely and I dipped my paintbrush just in pure linseed oil. And what this will allow you to do is kind of more evenly blend the colors, mix them together a little bit better, especially given that we're working on this, this piece of board rather than a canvas. Another thing you can do on this board that you can't do in real uh, on a canvas really well is use your finger to kind of blend these colors together. I found that to be interesting that um, that's not a technique you always want to use on an oil painting on a canvas, but it worked pretty well here. So if your painting ends up kind of streaky, that's a way to blend your colors a little bit. I'm picking up a little bit more white again. As I've mentioned, you tend to go through white quite a bit. In my own collection of oil paints, um, I have a giant tube of white paint that um, I always have on hand, whereas my other paint colors are in smaller tubes. So I picked up some of the white, and I'm going over the yellow and the red section to kind of create a highlight. And because these paints are still a little bit wet, the yellow and the red parts, it kind of mixes, mixes in with the white as I add these little highlight sections. I've always felt that the most fun step in oil paintings is that final glossy look, whether you're painting a face and you're adding that light reflection on an eye, or in this case, the, 
the shiny glossiness of the side of the apple that tends to make the painting pop in the end, make it seem more realistic. I'm using my finger here once again because that tends to help blend it up a little bit better. I added a little bit of linseed oil to the top because we found that helps blending as well. There's a little bit of a white reflection. If you look at the image again, there's a little bit of a white reflection on the, the other side of the apple as well, light reflection. And the last step is adding the little tiny stem. My, um, my apple doesn't have a pretty stem sticking out, so it's kind of just a little brown dot in the center. Um, but I use that burnt umber to add that little spot in the center. So now it really appears to be sinking in the center of the apple, top center. The last thing I want to do is go back with a clean brush and dip it in the linseed oil and kind of blend out that shadow a little bit because it has some rough edges. So I wanted to smooth mine out a little bit. And there we have it. A very basic and kind of slightly impressionistic apple painting. For the cleanup, I wanted to show you what you should properly do. Always make sure you clean off your brushes thoroughly. Um, these are not like watercolor paint brushes where you just wet it and it comes to life again. If you let oil paint dry on these paint brushes, they'll be ruined forever. So make sure that you clean them off thoroughly and do the technique where you dab it on the paper towel. And that's how you can tell all the paint is gone. As far as a palette knife, you wanna wipe that clean. I've already wiped mine clean here. It, once it dries, it's hard to get off. And then for your palette, you've got a lot of paints left. Uh, use it on another painting. Um, it'll take a few days to dry. Oil paints take a lot longer than other paints, but once it dries, it's ruined. As far as the paint thinner goes, do not pour that down the sink. Never a good idea. Instead, I recommend letting it sit in the cup for a couple of days and all of the paint sediment will sink to the bottom and you'll be able to pour relatively clean paint thinner back into the bottle. Well, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Give yourself a pat on the back because that was challenging. So some closing remarks I wanted to make. If you got oil paint on your hands, then don't use soap and water to get it all off. It's not gonna completely come off. The best way to do it is to take a paper towel and dab a little bit of the paint thinner on the paper towel and rub it off your hands. Remember too what I said, if it gets on other surfaces, it's really difficult to get it off. So that's why I always recommend wearing an old shirt um, and covering your surface completely so you don't get oil paint anywhere. The other thing I wanted to mention to you too is that we used the little boards that came in the kit, um, these little paper-like boards. But do be aware that if you, you do true oil painting, you wanna do it on a canvas surface or a linen surface or um, a wood panel. Uh, traditionally, paper doesn't work very well with oil paints. 
but because I wanted to show you what it was like to use everything in the kit, that's why we went that route. But for future tutorials, I do want you to try to get a canvas, um, either a stretch canvas on a frame or a booklet of canvas uh, paper. And the reason I say that is because when you use canvas, you'll see what I mean when you do it, that you can blend so much better. The oil doesn't completely and very quickly absorb into the, the paper like it did today. Um, and you can get much more soft shading values than, than you could on paper. So try and go ahead and get that canvas for next time and I'll see you then. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you still have questions, leave a comment. Also follow me on Instagram at ebofficialart.